Hello there my fellow gamers and welcome back to the channel. When almost all manufacturers announced an 18 inch addition to their gaming laptop lineup, we expected that the insane screen size would have been reserved for the absolute high end options. Luckily we have been wrong and while it is very difficult to keep track of what is what with Asus's Strix lineup, they sent over their latest G18. While we also tested the high-end Strix Scar 18, which provides the pinnacle of the mobile big screen gaming experience right now, its lower spec brother comes with a much more wallet friendly spec sheet. Let's see what the mid-ranger can provide for games and how much sense it makes in general to use an 18 inch panel in a somewhat mobile device. While the before mentioned SCAR 18 comes with the fastest offerings for both the CPU and GPU you can get right now, the G18 has been downgraded all around and comes with an Intel i7 13650HX and everybody's darling when it comes to mobile GPUs, the RTX 4070 running at 140 watts. In addition, our review sample is equipped with 32 gigs of DDR5 4800 RAM and a 1TB SSD. The massive display comes in a 16x10 aspect ratio with a QHD Plus resolution and refreshes at a snappy 240Hz. While we know it's not entirely fair to compare both laptops with each other, we will still include our measurements for the SCAR 18 as well to give you guys a point of reference. The overall chassis design is the same for both laptops. But the G18 comes without some of the see-through bits used in the SCAR 18. And in general, we must admit, neither of the Strix looks or feels particularly premium this time around. While I personally do not mind the overall design language, I could do without the gamery font and titbits all around the chassis. And while the metal it feels solid, especially the keyboard area feels a bit cheap on the G18. That doesn't mean the Strix isn't well made. While there is some flex in the base unit, it's not that bad for such a big machine. And the extensive use of plastic rather than metal is also keeping the weight in check. I just think with a more subtle design and improved material quality, the Strix series in general would appeal to a much wider audience. While this is my first time playing around with an 18 inch gamer, I must admit I really like the form factor. If you are someone who does not really want to add an external screen to your setup, this should be right up your alley. I have the AMD Power 2023 Strix SCAR 17 in the studio as well, and it shows that while the screen size is increased tremendously, the overall chassis dimensions aren't as extreme, and it's really not like you have to go out and buy a new desk to make room for your shiny new gaming laptop. While I would have preferred if ASUS would have kept some of the ports in the back, there is not too much to complain about when it comes to the overall port selection and placement. On the left you can find the power connector, a network check, HDMI 2.1, Thunderbolt 4 Type-C, an additional Type-C in the 3.2 Gen 2 standard and the audio combo port. On the right RG made room for two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2s. Regarding maintenance, we have to give ASUS credit for making it relatively easy to get inside the G18. When loosening one of the screws in the front, it lifts the base plate for a few millimeters, making it easy for the user to pry open the chassis for repairs or upgrades. Once inside, you have access to a pair of SODEMs and NVMe slots and the Wi-Fi card. Whether you like the keyboard or not comes down to your personal preference. While the overall layout is making good use of the available space, some secondary functions and the F keys have to make do with smaller keys. That said, both feedback and tactility are a good average with a decent amount of travel. The touchpad might not be as large as Razer's offerings for example, but it worked well during our testing even if we would have wished for a slightly more premium feel for the clicks. While the display in the G18 is impressive due to its sheer size alone, it can also deliver up on further inspection. The IPS panel provides solid brightness with above 420 nits, decent contrast numbers and excellent color gamut coverage. Even though brightness distribution could be better, the QHD Plus screen comes adequately calibrated from the factory. And with manual calibration, we've been able to improve average Delta E to below 1, making this one an excellent choice for a photo or video editing workstation. If you can live with the occasional glance from your co-workers when turning on your notebook. Gamers will also have their fair share of fun with the panel, since the speedy 240Hz refresh rate is backed up by very snappy response times. Alright folks, let's see if the massive notebook can provide big boy performance as well. 
In the CPU department, the i7-13650HX is a very new CPU that we haven't seen that often in the studio so far. The 55W chip comes with a total of 6 performance cores which are hyper-threading capable and 8 efficiency cores. This setup puts the Raptor Lake chip slightly below last year's flagship and about on par with the 13900H in the ROG M16 for example. The 2023 Intel flagship in the SCAR18 is ahead by a significant margin. This translates to system performance as well. While our subjective impression was that of a very snappy system, our PCMark scores show some weak spots compared to the competition. If you are interested in detailed results and numbers for all of our benchmarks, please follow the link in the description below to our written reviews. My colleague Florian has been hard at work to test the G18 thoroughly. Alright, it's GPU time, let's talk about the 4070. In my Gigabyte Aero 16 review, which was equipped with the mid-range NVIDIA chip as well, I was actually left quite satisfied with the performance it delivered. Especially taking into consideration the 100W power target in a relatively thin chassis. The same holds true for the Flows at 13 we tested recently, which delivered a ton of performance in a tablet with a 4070 running at just 65W. But considering that we are dealing with a 140 watts variant in the G18 and get basically the same results in our synthetic tests as the before mentioned Aero 16, it leaves a lot to be desired for such a massive gaming focused system. The mid-range ADA mobile offering seems to not scale as well with higher wattages as its bigger 4080 and 4090 cousins. And in general, the 4070 sits sandwiched between last year's top dog, the 3080 Ti, and a fast 3070 Ti. While the 4080 in the G16, for example, is about 30% faster, and a 4060 being about 25% slower. In real world gaming scenarios, the whole situation does look a lot better though, and the 4070 can close the gap to the 3080 Ti somewhat while outperforming most 3070 Ti's in our combined performance rating. Despite all the criticism for the 4070, it is actually a great fit for the G18's QHD display, handling the native resolution of the chunky gamer without any real problems and above 60 FPS for almost all games we have tested. While you will have a hard time getting close to the native 240Hz refresh rate, unless you want to drop things down to 1080p and play around with the settings, 150 plus FPS in popular competitive titles should not be too much of a problem. If you own a higher risk external screen, 4K is possible as well, but you will be limited by the relatively small amount of video memory a lot faster, and you might have a hard time running your favorite games above or close to 60fps. Nvidia has a trick up its sleeve on that occasion though, and while we mostly do our benchmarks without the help of any upscaling tech, it's hard to deny what DLSS3 and frame generation bring to the table. While it can not quite take things into playable territory with a Plague Tale Requiem going from 23 to 33 FPS, Hogwarts Legacy is a totally different story. While we only got 28 frames natively, with DLSS and frame generation the G18 delivers 54 FPS, which is a considerable improvement without any obvious trade-offs. In terms of fan noise, the big gamer is doing okay with quiet operation in its silent profile and moderate noise in performance mode. As the name suggests, Turbo can get quite noisy though. In addition, almost all Strix models suffer from more or less severe coil whine. I personally do not mind it too much, but if that bothers you, it might be something to take into account. We took some noise samples for you under various loads so you can get an idea yourself. As always, for all detailed measurements, please head over to our written review. As long as you do not push the CPU and GPU too much when away from the wall, the G18 offers surprisingly good battery life, making it a great companion for a big screen mobile movie experience. 
More than 8 hours in our standard Wi-Fi test are very impressive and is hardly matched by any competing device. Alright my fellow gaming enthusiasts, it's time to wrap this up for today. All in all, the G18 is a great gaming laptop without any glaring weaknesses. The chassis might be a bit questionable in the design department and could offer a better material selection, but overall build quality is definitely alright. Port selection and inputs are good as well and the 18 inch screen is simply an excellent panel for both entertainment and work. This brings us to the overall performance impression, which is actually not that bad. Gaming performance is well suited for the QHD display and the G18 is a snappy system across various use cases. The only problem, again not only for this one, is pricing. The 4070 is not a bad card per se, but while it's only marginally faster than last year's 3070 Ti, systems like the G18 are significantly more expensive in 2023. While we have to take things like the bigger chassis and display into account and of course bigger economic factors at play across the globe right now, you still end up paying more for this year's tech than ever before. We put links with updated prices in the description below. And please let us know what you think about the G18 and its value proposition in the comments. We would love to hear your thoughts. This would be it for today. As always, please leave your like if you felt entertained and informed and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks a ton for watching, my name is Alex, you have been amazing and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.